is Sam Felton, founder of Smash the Fat, and welcome to episode three of Smash It Out TV. Uh, I'm indoors today as the weather has been absolutely terrible, hasn't it? Um, anywho, uh, today we're straight up talking about what you must ask yourself before you start another diet. Uh, and at the end of today's show, I'm introducing a new segment to the show which is called Unstoppable Sam, where I shout out loud ten times in a public place, I am unstoppable. Now, it's something that I've done in the past, uh, but I want to be doing it every week in a different place, and any suggestions that you've got um, for public places, I'd love to find out. Uh, but before we start that one, um, we've got 60 second science, where I'm given 60 seconds to simply explain a health and fitness strategy. Um, so, for that, uh, let's go over to Sam. Thank you, Sam. Now, today's subject is, does fat make you fat? So, let's get to it. Three, two, one, here we go. So, the skinny on fat is, it doesn't make you fat. Excess calories, and more importantly, excess carbohydrates do. Eating more fats, but less carbs, in a sense, forces your body to start using fat as energy and you become a fat burner rather than a sugar burner for daily activities. Uh, so, we need fat for loads of processes within the body, such as thinking, fat oxidisation or burning, uh, and very importantly, balancing your hormones, very, very important. If you do go on a low-fat diet, that usually means that it's high in carbohydrates, and this is the true cause of us becoming overweight. Uh, this is due to the insulin we secrete after we eat carbohydrates leading to fat cells becoming larger. Uh, although this insulin secretion isn't an important bodily process for us to deliver nutrients through our bloodstream, the amount of carbohydrates that we eat today isn't appropriate to our modern lifestyles. Thank you very much for that, Sam. That was very enlightening 60 seconds. So let's move on to today's main subject, which is what you must ask yourself before starting another diet. The question is, can I follow this diet forever? Many people go on fad diets that's a quick fix to getting them to lose weight fast, only to put the weight back on a few weeks after they finish. But only if they'd asked, can I follow this diet forever from the start? Now the unfortunate truth is that health is a never-ending story and you've got to keep on top of it until the last day on this planet. Now you might be thinking that I'm being a bit harsh and a bit dismal with this outlook, but I'm a big believer in embracing the struggle that's in front of you and to positively move forward from it. Um, and this will create everlasting results. Now the struggle with a lot of diets is sustainability. Not sustainability for the planet, although this is a very important thing to think about really, um, but the sustainability of you doing it for the long term. Take the cabbage soup diet, uh, where you're almost driven to almost starvation on a daily basis, and not very many nutrients at all. Um, to do this diet forever would be an absolute impossibility and most probably fatal. Now sometimes it is appropriate to follow a certain diet that cannot be done forever in what I like to call deliberate extremes. For example, I usually recommend my clients to be on a low carbohydrate diet for around about 28 days to help reset their body uh, but I always have a plan for the future and what they're going to be doing afterwards, which is the most important thing. Um, after an initial low carbohydrate diet for around about those 28 days, my dietary advice is based on optimal health for the human body. I recommend clients starting on a paleoithic style diet. Uh, now this means to eat similar foods that we ate as cave people and to avoid or just reduce uh, some relatively um, recent man-made foods. Uh, the main man-made foods to avoid or reduce in a paleoithic style diet are grains, uh, alcohol and sugar. 
Uh, with this style of diet, uh, I'm able to guarantee results that smash the fat and have also seen cholesterol and blood pressure lower. Um, I recommend you do this for a 14 day life experiment where you completely avoid these foods and um, see how you feel and look and if you feel and look better then it's probably a good idea to give it just another 14 days um, and then if after those 28 days you're feeling a lot lot better um, I highly recommend that you really do stick to it and of course play the 80% rule um, and when we embark on most diets we think that we are restricting ourselves but we, what we ignore to acknowledge is what we're missing out on if we keep going down the road we're on. A core value that I teach at my indoor fitness boot camp, Smash the Fat, is consistent persistence, uh, which means to keep doing something that's good for you even when you don't want to. This value is one of the most important things to live by in this modern world where so many things come and go um, and I hope you take those words with absolute um, seriousness um, because you can make the change. Just do that 14 day life experiment where you remove those foods of grains, sugar and alcohol and then see how you feel. Cool. So let's go over to Sam uh, where he's going to be being unstoppable. Thank you Sam. So uh, here we are at Unstoppable Sam and I'm here in Victoria Park underneath the bandstand, hence the echo, um, and today is the first segment of Unstoppable Sam and I've got a nice little special treat for you. Um, so this is the segment where I shout I am unstoppable ten times out loud. Um, so here we go. Alright, so three, two, one. I am unstoppable! 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 And I am unstoppable! Um, so hopefully that's giving you a little bit of inspiration to become unstoppable yourself. Um, but for next week, um, I want as many suggestions as you've got for good places to do I Am, un, um, I am Unstoppable uh, and also on next week's show uh, I've got Charlotte Ord from The Biggest Loser with us who's going to be teaching us about effective exercise for busy mums. So until next time, smash it out!